So we've talked about some reducing agents like lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. But let's talk about some specialized ones, which have the abbreviation DIBAH and LTBA. This first one is diisobutyl aluminum hydride. And I'm going to draw the structure of that out right over here. So here's the hydride hydrogen. And then we have two isobutyl groups. Now, this reducing agent is weaker than sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. And one of the main reasons for that is the steric hindrance that these isobutyl groups provide. And so this can be used to convert uh, esters into aldehydes if you proceed at a lower temperature. So these are a more specialized reducing agent. But before we get too far, let's also talk about LTBA, which is lithium tritert-butoxy aluminum hydride. And this one is a little bit bigger to draw, so. We have our lithium counter ion. And I'll try to keep it within this bracket. So here's our aluminum, and then we need three tert butoxide groups. So there's our tert butoxide groups. We'll need our hydride for the reducing portion. And of course, this whole thing is actually negatively charged. This agent can be used to convert acid chlorides to aldehydes if you proceed at a low temperature. If you do not use low temperatures, you will proceed to reduce all the way to the alcohol. So if you're going to the trouble of using these specialized reagents, make sure that you set up your reaction conditions in such a way that you'll actually stop at the aldehyde and not go all the way to the alcohol. Otherwise, you may have well used um, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride at that point. So just as a reminder, let's go over what some of these reagents can do. And we'll start with the LTBA, which is right here, the lithium tritert butoxy aluminum hydride. So in this case, we can take an acid chloride And we'll use LTBA at a cold temperature. So cold temperature usually means dry ice. So that's minus 78 degrees C is a good choice. And we'll use ether as our solvent. And if we do, then we can reduce this to the aldehyde. And again, this is the LTBA um, structure. Now, so this is good at converting um, acid chlorides to aldehydes. And over here, we can convert esters into aldehydes. So let's look at an example of that, and then we'll further explore this reaction by looking at its mechanism. 
So we'll just pick some ester to look at. Um, so here's an ester. And then we can convert that into the aldehyde. So step one, we'll have to add our reducing agent. Step two, uh, we'll need to add uh, an acid workup step. And we'll see that in the mechanism here. So it converts to the aldehyde. And of course, we'll also have the alcohol from this portion. Now let's examine the mechanism and we'll see why in this case, it will stop at the aldehyde. And we are going to skip a few of the steps later on, um, just because it's just a hydrolysis portion, so not quite as important. So we've got our hydride with the aluminum and then here's our bulky kind of groups on here and what will happen is the electrons in between the aluminum and hydrogen will go ahead and attack the carbon in the carbonyl and in turn the oxygen will bind with the uh, aluminum and that's going to stabilize this negative charge up here a little bit. So we're going to make a complex which is stable at low temperatures. And I should write that this is done at low temperatures. So we'll form this stable complex. Hydrogen has been added. And then we have our, the rest of our ester group, the, which is now more of an ether. Now, this is stable at the low temperatures. What we'll do next is we'll add in our acid and then let the reaction warm up. And what the acid will do is react with any remaining uh, DIBAH and that will remove it from the reaction. And then it will also hydrolyze this portion and this. But first, let's just look at what happens immediately here. So... We add the acid, and then that will remove the aluminum portion. So what we'll be left with is a hemiacetal. It's like this, and we can draw that hydrogen in that we've added up there. Now, if we go back and recall our reactivity of hemiacetals, if we add enough water and acid catalyze this, we can remove this group because it's a reversible reaction. And then at that point, we will form our ethanol with, because it's got two carbons here, and we'll reform the carbonyl through several steps that uh, we'll just kind of skip over those a little bit here. The main point is that we formed this complex that is stable. And since it stops here, it doesn't continue on in, until we do other things, uh, we're able to control how much of the reducing agent is in the solution before further reaction happens. And that's how we're able to stop at the aldehyde. 
And so we can just kind of say there's several steps with involving water and acid. And at that point, we will get over to the hydrolyzed portion from the hemiacetal. That's how we get to our aldehyde and alcohol. So now we've explored the reactivity of a couple of new reducing agents, ones that have lower reactivity, which allows us greater control over what we're doing. Again, those are uh, diisobutyl aluminum hydride and lithium tritertbutoxide aluminum hydride. These reagents are useful for making aldehydes from those more reactive acid chlorides and esters.